Welcome to the Girls With Power Tools channel. <laughs> Maybe not. But I do have another power tool, a bandsaw, a Shepak HBS20, and si a ruban, as it says on the side there. I got this from the tool show at Kempton Park Racecourse a couple of weeks ago, and it's well worth going to these types of shows because they're free to get in, they want to sell you things, and they will discount things quite heavily. So I got £15 off this bringing it to just over £100, which I think is really good value. I also bought a router from the same show for £50 off. So I repeat, it's well worth going to these types of shows, things like the Yandels Woodworking Show, European Woodworking Show, things like this. This was delivered on a pallet. First time I've ever had anything delivered like that. It, it's, it is quite manageable. But I guess regulations are that it has to be liftable by a forklift truck if it's over a certain weight. I don't know. I'm hoping there's an extra blade inside this because I, I bought an extra blade. I was told that if I wanted to be using it with rosewood and oak and mahogany, these are the sort of things I'm going to be using it with, um, guitar making, then I needed an upgraded blade. So I'm hoping that they've opened it up and resealed it with an extra blade inside. But let's get this thing open and find out. Easier said than done, seeing as that the bands have cut into the side of the box. But there we go. Right, just going to get rid of the pallet. Let's get this open. I just noticed, I think the reason this is called an HBS 20 is because the width of the largest item it can take is 200 millimetres, 20 centimetres. The height is 18 centimetres, which I think is fine for what I want to use it for. I'm hoping that's the extra blade I ordered. I don't think this is standard with it. Uh, I imagine it comes with another blade somewhere within this packaging. That's just a bit of cardboard. Let me put that aside for a moment. There's the table. Oh, with, with loose bolts. I have to be a bit careful I don't lose things. Are they captive or are they loose? They are loose. That's very uh, strange. The bolts are just dropped into the table, but they are loose. Fortunately, none of them have come out, but it's a little bit odd that they haven't packed the bolts separately. So, yeah, some things have fallen off that. I hope this isn't going to be one of those puzzles. Let's get rid of that. Safety first, push stick. Fence. The blade is already fitted, yeah, so that was, that was a, a spare blade, so we're alright. Now this is the bit that I always find awkward, trying to lift these things out. This might be easier if it was on the floor, but let's see. <laughs> I'm going to have to put this on the floor and lift this out onto the table. Right, hot tip number two, get somebody to help you pick it out. It, it is quite heavy, it's, it's not too bad, it's a tabletop hobby bandsaw, but difficult to get out of the box on your own. This was all that was in the box, so mercifully not too many things to put together. 
This is interesting. I don't know any of, if you saw my unboxing of the pillar drill, but it came with an identical thing, an adapter for a European to UK socket, or plug rather. But they haven't fitted it on the plug, which I find a little bit odd. Um, I guess most people are going to know how to do this, but you clip it in there. Unless, of course, this came out in transit, which I find it, well, it can't have done. It screws together. But it's a little bit awkward. I'm going to have to go and find a Phillips screwdriver to put this together. There you go, it's clipped together, and then we screw it in. If any of you did see my uh, unboxing of the pillar drill, you'll know I had a few electrical problems with that item. I hope we're not heading the same way with this doesn't seem particularly secure, but I need to go and get the screwdriver to screw this in. Okay, I've got the plug attached, but I've been scratching my head for the last half an hour, trying to figure out the first line of the instructions. The instructions are written in half English. They're poorly translated, probably from German. And I'll read out the first instruction. It says, Position the tabletop A, which is this, over the bandsaw blade B and put it on the swivelling seat. So I've tried to figure out what the swivelling seat is that I'm supposed to put this table on. And as you can see, there's not very much here that would take a tabletop. Now, to me, swivelling means rotation in that axis access, axis. And this might be the subtleties of language, but to me that's what that means. Rotation in this axis, which this mechanism is going to provide, now I'd call that tilting rather than swivelling. So I'm wondering whether I'm a victim here of poorly translated English, maybe I'm being too picky. But what's happened, I think, is originally these instructions were written with the assumption that there's a bracket attached here and that the table will then slide over and you'll screw it onto that bracket but the way it comes delivered is that bracket this one here is already attached to the table now it might be that I can put this on without detaching the bracket we'll, we'll find out but I think that's very poorly worded. It, it, it's, it's partly the use of the word swivelling and partly the fact that I think these instructions were originally written when this was attached here rather than to the table. So I probably will have to turn this around actually or work with my back to you. Let's turn this around and let's try fitting this by taking these bolts off and sliding it in that way. Next minor annoyance, I've taken the bolts, bolts, the nuts, whatever these things are called, off the bolts on the back of the tilting mechanism and the bolts are not captive. So this is going to be tricky because as soon as I push the table on the bolts are going to push inside the body of the mechanism. So Let's open that. Yeah, so when I push the table on, I'm going to have to have my hand inside. <laughs> Don't do this with it plugged in, whatever you do, because my hand's going to be right next to the blade, holding the bolts in place. I think if they originally had this mechanism attached to the, the, the tilting mechanism attached here, already pre-bolted, than put on the table, surely that's a much safer way of doing it. But uh, anyway. Let's, let's give it a go and see what happens. Hmm. Uh, now I've got to learn about how this mechanism works. Right, there we go. Height adjuster. 
hopefully we can now slide this over the blade and position this over the bolts. This is fiddly in the extreme because of course I've pushed the bolts through. And don't do this without your hair tied back. Show you the two types of bolt. I'm not a nut, adjustment nuts. You've got that one there, and then the other's just effectively a wing nut. Now, I think you have to operate both of them to tilt the, the table, but I'm not sure really why you've got the two types. Because I think both of them, there you go, that, that's the other nut, it's just a wing nut, plastic wing nut. But you'd have to slacken both of them off to tilt the table. So I don't know whether they're, I don't know why they're two types of bolt. Okay. Now what I do know is that this bolt here, if you can see that, that's to adjust it so that when you've got the table fully down, there we go, that you know that that is completely at right angles to the blade. That's something I can sort out later. It's not the smoothest of swivel actions. I don't know whether I've Put it on correctly, I think I have. Ah, I now understand why there's two types of bolt. There's a trigger mechanism which means that the handle on the end of the bigger bolt can be positioned at any at any angle so you can keep it away from the wing nut. I think if there were two wing nuts on there they'd get in the way of each other. Okay, so the table's on. That plate goes in there like that. And then the next instruction is to attach the U-bracing C with two countersink screws M616 and knurled nuts D at the front of the sawing table. So that's here. And this is presumably to just give the table more rigidity. So those fit on there. With, like so. And I will now click my fingers and the nut on the floor will magically appear there, like so. Ooh, okay, that's pretty much it for assembly. There is the fence. I'm assuming there's a set of instructions that tell me to put the fence on somewhere. Probably like that. But there we go. One little bonus, I don't need to adjust the angle of the table 
there's a bolt under here which you can raise and lower to um, set the end stop for the table and you can s adjust it for a proper 90 degrees. I've, I've checked the blade and it is 90 degrees so that's good there's no adjustment to be done there. There are some more confusing instructions in this. I've been reading through the instructions um, where it talks about the replacement of the soaring band, the soaring band, um, it says wind back the lower soaring band protection K to cover the soaring band once you put the band back on. Now K is marked as the lock nut on the back of the saw which you can't see that adjusts the angle of the wheel inside to make sure that the the band is staying on the wheel at the top. I don't know what it is they're referring to when they talk about wind back the lower soaring band protection K. Um, I've really no idea. I, I don't know whether this is just poorly translated again but I think K has been mislabeled in the instructions because K is a lock nut on the back. It's nothing to do with any lower soaring band protection which I'm assuming is down here but how you wind it back I don't know there's no knob or anything for that. The other bit is the tension um, it says check the tension by pressing a finger halfway between the table and the upper band guide against the side of the band. The band should not edge down more than three to five millimeters. I, when they say down I'm assuming they mean sideways but I mean that the tension in that seems fine to me I could I could tighten it up a little bit but I would have thought that the saw blade would always move sideways three to five millimeters it depends on how hard you push it so I mean maybe this is just a trial and error thing but I can't understand those instructions make sure it doesn't move down by three to five millimeters I don't know anyway I think I've got to the point where I will switch it on and at least see that it works. I've not had a very good track record in this area. Moment of truth, let's switch it on and see what happens. Something rattles, but that seems all right. So, let's cut something. I guess that works. So the conclusion of this, particularly for those of you who've seen my pillar drill video, is I've bought something that works. But in common with the pillar drill, there are some problems with the instructions, um, partly from proofreading, there's some mistakes in there, um, partly because I think the way they're packaging it has changed. Um, but also just translation. I, th I wish people would spend more time getting a proper translation of things. I think some of the, the subtleties of some of the words, using the word swivel instead of tilt, mm, I, don't, I don't know, maybe I'm being over picky here. But hey, it, it seems a good product. It's solid. It works. I, I might need to uh, do a bit of adjustment of it. But um, yeah, success. Two thumbs up, I think, or may maybe a thumb and a half.